Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make smooth house in the style of chaos in the CBD. So, as usual, you get the project file and samples from this video in the description, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available. Anyway, let's get started. So, this is the loop we heard in the intro, it's at 119 BPM, and the first sound we have here is this rose, which sounds like this. So basically, I'll show you the notes slash like the chords first. This is the pattern it's playing. It's happening over four bars. So it's got like this little, it's basically this chord progression. And then I just have these little things in between, like these things. So for these things, I just took notes from the chords. Like for example, here, you can see that's just kind of like building into the chord. Same thing there, these are all just voices from the chords. I guess I added this note here. But I mean, it sounded good, it sounded in key, it's not too difficult. So yeah, like, writing these parts is really more about the chords. And so, with the chords here, these are all major and minor ninth chords actually. So like, for example, this first chord, F minor ninth. Then we've got a D sharp major ninth. And then we've got a C minor ninth. So, just taking these kind of more like jazzy sort of well also like housey kind of chords and doing kind of like something more rhythmic with it and really making it like work with the beat i feel like is the key here but yeah it's not too difficult to write these kind of chord progressions like i said once you start playing around with these style of more like jazzy chords you'll come to something pretty quickly like this isn't the most complicated chord progression in the world if you just think about like the basic chords underneath here. So yeah, pretty simple. And then for the sound on this one, I made it using Operator. So what I was going for here was I was trying to make like a Rhodes type of sound. Um, because Chaos and the CBD use like a Fender Rhodes. If you don't know, a Fender Rhodes is an electric piano that has a very distinct sound. They use that sound a lot, and I wanted to try to show you how to do this just like with synthesis, I guess. So yeah, that's what I did here. I've got this sort of FM road sound. So what we've got is we've got four sine waves. You can see, yeah, all four sine waves. And then you can see I've just got them kind of set like this with the envelopes. So I'm kind of just, like this is a pluck, but it's not like a super, it's not like if I turn the sustain all the way down which is kind of subtle but yeah i feel like this really helps and then also like it's just kind of like strategically doing it as well like for example this last oscillator if i turn it off you will notice the attack is a lot flatter here's with it and then without it you can hear without it it's kind of missing that like rosy kind of thing. So that's another thing, like just kind of doing it strategically. Like I said, like this one, it's up. I've got the chorus pitch at four and I've got the level there, but then you can see the envelope is really short. So this is just hitting with the attack there. Um, But yeah, so that is really it for inside of operator. After that, I've got a bit of chorus. You can see I've got the dry wet there, the amounts there, and then we've got a pretty slow rate. And after that, I have the saturator and the saturator is pretty important for the sound. You can hear it's got that nice kind of like lo-fi sort of distortion to it. And that's what the saturator is doing. Here's without it. And then with it. So yeah, it's not exactly subtle, but it definitely works pretty well for this style. Like this kind of more dusty sort of like almost lo-fi sound. I won't quite say that this is like lo-fi house, but like almost lo-fi. Um, but then after that, I've just got this echo, you can see, I've got it set on the time setting, so it's just doing milliseconds. It's pretty fast, it's just hoping to give it a bit of kind of stereo width. I've got the ping pong mode set, so. Yeah, then after that, I've just got a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, and then the last thing we have here is this EQ8 cutting out the low end. You can hear the sound kind of has a lot of low end, so that's very important with this one. The next thing we've got here is the string, which sounds like this. So what this is, is this is meant to be kind of like a drone, sort of like how, you know, like in a lot of house music you would have like just a string just playing one note for a long time or something like that. 
that's what this is. And then I've just kind of gone in a little bit more, musically speaking, with this one. So you can hear what's happening is it's kind of following the chord progression. <laughs> Where it's going F for those first two bars, and then in the last, in the third bar, it doesn't go to D sharp. That's what the chord is there, D sharp mi major. Um, but it does go to C, and C is the relative minor. Like C minor is the relative minor of of D major. So that's why this works. But yeah, so again, this just meant to be kind of like some extra like musical sort of ear candy. So the way I made this was by taking this string sample. I just put it in to a sampler here. Pretty simple stuff, um, no pun intended. And then I've got that going into a bit of reverb. So the reverb isn't too long. Like you can hear if I stop playing, it goes away pretty quickly. And that's fine. I've talked about this a lot recently on my channel, but like if you have something that has a lot of reverb or just a lot of spacey effects in general, like this overall track. Between this lead and the rose, has like a lot of like delay and reverb and stuff going on so I didn't want to go too crazy with the reverb I just have it at kind of like a shorter time and then I've got the dry wet up high enough to where you're hearing it but it's not getting in the way of the sound after that I just have a compressor side chaining into the kick and that is really it for the string it's pretty simple the next thing we have here is this lead which sounds like this So the way I made this, I'll show you the notes first. Basically, I was trying to just make some sort of like accent at the end of every two bars or so here. So you can hear it's not playing the whole time, obviously. But it kind of just comes in there. And like says little things, so to speak. And this is how Chaos and the CBD do their leads a lot of the time. Like it's not always a synth lead. Like sometimes they'll have like a sax or a trumpet. Or something like that, or even like a flute or something, and just kind of have it come in sort of in a very sparse way like this, where it just, you know, it just sounds like it's playing like a little solo. Which I think is cool because with this thing you can hear it's really spacey, so we kind of get those like delay and reverb trails. Which I really think sound good in the track. Like I said, I really like having like kind of a pattern like this with the chords where like this is very you know there's already a lot going on there and then just having kind of like a lead come in and out like this so yeah that's pretty much the theory behind the notes i mean it's not too difficult to write you can see like i'm just really following the key that we're in like we're in f minor so believe it or not the first note is just f and then we go to g sharp right after that just the third so like yeah, or the minor third, I should say, but yeah, like nothing too crazy, just kind of these simple, sort of like jazzy, bluesy kind of solo notes. So then for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What we've got here is we've just got a sine wave and a little bit of white noise, and then I just have the amp envelope set like this, just kind of like a quick pluck. After that, you can see I've got a bit of vibrato, I've got it pretty high at 61%, and then we've got the rate at 9.8 hertz. So you can hear that's pretty pronounced. If I turn it off, it's a lot more flat and kind of dull, so it's a good way to give it like a lot of character. And no pun intended, but a lot of vibe. After that, we've got an echo. You can see I've just got it on dotted and eighth notes. Pretty simple. That's that cool kind of delay that you hear ringing out throughout the track. We've also got this reverb here. I've got the decay time up a bit higher, and I've got the dry wet there. And again, this sound is just so sparse. There's a lot of room to let it just ring out like that. So that's why I have that set that way. After that, we have the saturator, and so the saturator is what's giving it that kind of crispy, almost like crunchy texture. If I turn it off, yeah, you can hear it. it's very flat sounding. So this is what really brings it to life and gives it a lot of more like analog warmth. I've got the drive up there, and then I've got the bass frequency up, and yeah, and I really like putting this after the reverb and delay and the delay because you can hear you get a cool texture of the like distorted reverb and echo. And if I put it before. Not quite the same sound. So yeah, I really like putting that after the reverb. It's a good technique for this kind of sound. After that, we just have a compressor slide chain into the cake. And then finally, you guessed it, an EQ8 cutting out the lawn. That's it for the lead. Next sound we have here is the bass, which sounds like this.
So this bass, I'll show you the notes first. It's just following the chord progression. Like if I play this with the chords, you'll hear. The only difference here is you can see like there are some parts where the chords are just holding out. Like those ones. And then the bass is just kind of like. That's when the bass is grooving. So this is kind of another thing for this style. Like it's very funky and kind of like jazzy. So you never want to just have your bass line just playing like long notes. Like you wouldn't really want to do something like this. You can hear it when it just holds out that note. And it feels like so flat and dull. So I really like having, like I said, like the long held out chords where the bass is just kind of grooving. So then for the sound on this one, I made it use an operator. I was going for like a pretty simple kind of like bass guitar type of sound. And the way that I created this was using two sine waves. You can see I've got this first one and then the second one. Um, the envelope on the first one is kind of set to be like a pluck. The second one, it didn't really matter. It just kind of rings out. But yeah, then I've got the second one, the chorus pitch at 0.5, so this is a really good way to get the bass guitar kind of sound you can hear. If I turn that back to the default setting at 1, doesn't quite have that same texture. But when we bring that down, it just gives it like that kind of mid-range that the sort of bass guitar sound has. So then after that, I've just got a bit of saturation, nothing too crazy, it's at 5.14 dB. And then we should have a compressor side chaining into the kick. So that is it for the bass. The next thing that we have here is the drum bus, which all together sounds like this. So I've got a bit of processing on the group here, which I'll talk about. But first, let me show you the individual sounds. The first one we have here is this kick, which sounds like this. This is pretty simple, just kind of like a very punchy, like hard hitting. Kind of more organic sounding kick. Like, this isn't so, like... I don't know. This kind of sounds more like a hip-hop kick to me than it does, like, a house kick. But that's kind of the vibe, you know? This music is very, like, smooth and organic sounding. So it's better to have kind of, like, a warm, round kind of kick like this than something that's, like, just punching through the mix super hard. So I don't really have any processing on that. There's a lot of processing on the group here, so most of the individual sounds are pretty dry. But yeah, that's the kick. The next thing we have here is this clap, which sounds like this. And pretty much the same thing here. It's just kind of like a nice clap sample. Just kind of like something a little bit smoother, more organic. You can see I had this a little bit before the actual hit here. Like on the two and four is where the snare or the clap would usually hit. You can see I had this a little bit before. And that just kind of makes it groove with the kick a little more. If I quantize it, you'll hear. It's not quite the same. So yeah, then after that we have the shaker, and I'll show you this with the hi-hat, because they kind of go together. So these are kind of like the hi-hats in the track. We have the shaker, which is just playing some extra six seat notes, and then we've got this 909 hi-hat playing on the upbeats. And with the 909 hi-hat, you can see I've kind of, or you can hear, I've kind of shortened it a little bit. There's the original one, and then... This one, we've got the amplitude envelope turned like this a little bit, so I've got the sustain all the way down and the decay down. And then I've got it pitched up a little bit as well, and so this just kind of makes it tighter and sort of fit into the track a little bit more. And I hear this a lot in Chaos and the CBD's music, so that's why I was trying to do that. Then we've just got a little bit of echo on there. You can see I've got, got it set to this, like, 16 setting, and then I've got that set to 2. Not exactly sure what that means, but it's basically just a really nice, like, 8th note style delay. So then after that, the last drum that we have is this 909 ride, which sounds like this. So something I hear a lot in the music is just a 909 ride from a 909 drum machine. I'm sure you've probably heard of that before. And I just have it going through a bit of processing to give it a bit more texture. So we just got this EQ8, first of all, here. You can hear this is pretty necessary, because if you listen to the original sample, it's got a lot of kind of nasty low end and a lot of like really sharp high end. So I've just dialed those two things back here. And then we just have a bit of saturation. So you can see I've got the drive up and the bass frequency up a little bit. And yeah, so then on the drum bus, I've got a few effects. So here's what the drums sound like with nothing on them. So quite different. So the first effect that we have here is this EQ8, which sounds like this. 
to get here, what this is doing is it's just kind of dialing back some of that high end to get this sort of like lo-fi sound. And this is a really good technique because what you basically do is you just cut off the very high highs and then give a little like resonance boost there. And then when you put that into some distortion, which you can see we have here, it kind of like, it gives it this like really nice lo-fi sound, which I'll talk about more when I get to that. But then after that, I've got this compressor, which sounds like this. So you can see this is not doing a whole lot. It's just kind of like cutting those very high peaks and helping to flatten everything out a little bit more. You can see I've got the attack up on that so it's not messing with the transients. And yeah, then after that we just have this drum bus, which is the first thing of the sort of like distortion I was talking about. So you can hear what this kind of sounds like with that EQ8 now. If I turn that off, it's more like clean sounding. And that's like that nice kind of like no fine texture that we want. So then the last thing we have on here is just the saturator, which sounds like that. So that's kind of like sealing the deal and like really gluing everything together and giving it that nice crunchy texture. And again, here's without the EQ8 and then with it. So again, you can really hear that it helps to just nail down that kind of like more lo-fi texture so with that that is pretty much it that's all i've got to show you today i hope you guys enjoyed and yeah so that is it for today guys like i said hope you enjoyed uh make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i drop a new video which is every day um yeah so as usual you get the project file and samples from this video in the description and if you're a patron on my patreon check there because it'll be available shortly make sure to check out all my social media in the description and yeah thank you so much everybody and i'll see you tomorrow with another video